Hi, it's Vic. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I'm sharing two Christmas cards with you for the Christmas in July. And all the products I've used today are from the brand new Time for Tea Designs release. This is the Christmas surprise stamp set. So I'm just going ahead and stamping out all my images. And then once they're stamped out, I'm just going to go and do some Copic colouring. And I'm just going to play a little bit of music while we're colouring. And these are the matching dies, so I'm just placing these around my images and I'm going to be running them through my die cutting machine. And these two little pieces here, if you place them on the Christmas tree, they will leave a line after they're die cut. And what they do is you can use the top of the head that you've used to stamp and then the little legs so you can put the head at the top and the little legs will be sticking out and it looks like the cats in the Christmas tree. It's so fun and you'll see what I mean in a second. So here you can see the impression that the dies left and now I'm just removing the other die and I'm going to get the stamped image that I've got. See these have a little tab at the bottom so you, they're quite easy to just pop through the Christmas tree and now I'm going to be adding the legs and this is what the finished result looks like it's so fun and it's such a sweet way to brighten up your Christmas cards this is the candy stripes cover plate die and it's a DL size and it's one of my favorite dies out of the whole release so here I've just die cut it using some red card stock and I'm just placing some PVA glue down and then adhering it onto some craft card stock. And this is my DL card, so I'm just going to trim that down because I want the borders to be quite thin on this. But Joe has designed it, so whether you use the American size or the UK size, it will fit lovely on your card. So now I'm just using some double sided tape to adhere that down and now I'm just colouring in some extra baubles and bells that I stamped earlier and then we're going to move on to the sentiment. So I'm using the sentiment have a tremendous Christmas and I'm going to be heat embossing this so I've got some green card, I've used my Versamark ink and now I'm just using some white embossing powder. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat set this with my heat gum. But first I'm just brushing away some excess pieces of embossing powder. And now we're ready to go ahead and heat set this with the heat gun. 
And as this is a tool card, I wanted to add another sentiment. So I'm adding, may your holidays be full of wonderful surprises, which is again included in the same stamp set. And I'm just using my mini trimmer to trim these down before adhering them to my card. And now I'm just working on where to place everything. So I'm adhering all the pieces down with some foam tape. And then I'm going to be adding my sentiments, again using some foam tape and then adhering all the little bells and baubles where it looks like it's come pinging off the tree from where the dogs got into the Christmas tree. And also included in the stamp set, there's two images of a dog and one has a patch on its eye, which is super sweet. And there's also an image of a cat. So whether you're a dog person or cat person, there's something there for you and once everything's placed down that finishes up our first card and now we're going to move on to the second card which is a more of a pretty pastel-y Christmas card. So this die is the stripes cover plate die and again one of my favourites so I'm starting off doing some ink blending with some distress oxide inks and I'm using the beautiful blender brushes which is an absolute dream when it comes to ink blending. So if you do struggle, I highly recommend using these because it just makes it a lot easier. So the inks that I'm using is milled lavender, which is like a very light purpley colour, and bundled sage, which is again a light green colour, and they work really well together. And I haven't speeded up this ink blending clip just so you can see how well the brushes do work and make things a lot easier for you. And we're going to be turning this card into a shaker card. So once the ink blending's all complete, I cut down a piece of acetate to the same size as the die. And I'm just using some tacky glue on the back of the die and running that everywhere along the top edges and the bits in between and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere my acetate piece to the back of the card panel die and once that piece is dry I've then got some double sided foam tape I've got the long foam tape so I've actually cut that in half just so the sides are equal to the back of the die and then I'm going to be placing this onto the back of the card again right up to the top along the bottom and along the edges and there is a little piece here that I didn't quite measure quite right so don't worry if there is a gap because you can just chop off another piece of tape but you do need to make sure that the whole of the tape on every side is touching so there's no gap so when you do put your shaker parts in, when it does shake, none of them will come pinging out. Just use my EK Tools powder tool to go around the side of the foam tape because that does take away the stickiness. And I've got these little polystyrene balls which look really pretty but oh, they were a nightmare trying to get them in the shaker because they just kept sticking to the foam. So... If you're not very patient, I'd go ahead and use sequins. Um, but we got there in the end, so I've just cut out a piece of white card that I'm going to be placing onto the shaker. And then when I turn it over, I'm just going to trim off the little bit at the top and then my shaker part's done. And here I'm using two Spectrum Noir markers because I didn't have the these sort of green colours in with my Copics. Um, and if you don't have Copics, then the Spectrum Noir markers are really good to start with if you've just got into colouring. And all the other colours that I've used are the same colours on the card before, which I'll link everything down below. So now I'm just getting ready to adhere my shake apart and I've used some double sided tape for this. And I'm just pressing this onto my card base and here we have the little images from the stamp set. So we've got the dog coming out of the Christmas tree and I had the cat that was coloured and left over. So I thought it looked quite sweet peeking behind the tree. And now we're going to be working on the sentiment. So I've got some pink card here 
and again I'm just going to heat emboss this with some white embossing powder and I'm going to use my heat gun to heat set the powder and I'm going to trim the sentiment down and then add this onto my card. And once the sentiment is adhered down, I've got some clear Nouveau drops, which I've just added a couple of dots onto the card just to make it look a bit more pretty. I love using these. And the second card is now complete. Thank you so much for watching. I will link everything down below in the description box. Thanks. Bye.